The wooden deck that I'll be using comes in three parts. Actually, it comes in four parts, but I'll be using three parts in this video. And those are the three parts for the main deck. A forward section, a center section, and an aft section. Of these deck veneers, the forward section is going to be the most difficult of them all to install for three reasons. It's the longest, it's the narrowest, and it has the most details that need to be removed from it. So it's going to be the flimsiest. There are a few things that you need to know about a wooden deck veneer before you try and install it. The first is that they are very delicate. They do come apart quite easily because they are very thin slices of wood on an adhesive backing. The next thing to take into consideration is that the laser cutting is almost always not perfect. That is that in some areas it'll be fine and you'll be able to easily separate the deck from the excess, but in other areas it won't be cut through properly and you'll have to really cut it with a knife to get it apart. That means when combined with the delicate nature of these veneers, you have to actually have a strategy to remove it from its backing before you apply it to the model. If you just pick it up by the bow and try and pull it straight off, you are going to cause yourself a world of problems. You're going to damage the deck. You'll tear it. Excess parts will come with it. You'll probably even stick it to itself. It just won't work. So you need to think about how to remove the deck from its backing and the excess. The way that I find is the best way to do this is to leave the deck that you want to keep on the backing for as long as possible and rather peel off the excess first. That is what you see me doing here. I leave the deck itself stuck to the plastic backing and I lift up one of the sides of excess. And as I lift it up and bend it, I use the knife to cut any joints that are still holding it in place. Slowly work my way down the full length of this part and then remove that piece of excess and stick it to the back of the plastic. I'm just sticking it to the back of the plastic so that if for whatever reason I want to have access to more wood like this, I have that excess that I can cut off of. But the chances are I'm not going to need this wood. I just like to keep it just in case. The backing is very sticky, so just putting it somewhere out of the way so it doesn't get stuck to something else and start causing you problems later on is probably worth the effort as well. After working my way around the perimeter of the section of deck, I then move to start cutting out the sections in the middle. When it comes to the parts to remove in the middle, I don't necessarily remove all of them. A number of things once again to consider when deciding which parts to cut out and which parts to leave. Anything that has a protrusion coming out of the deck that is going to have to have this deck stuck through, those will need to be removed. The big obvious ones would be the barbettes, smaller things would be hatches and winches and that sort of a thing. For the small holes that don't have protrusions rising out of the deck, these are the holes where you'll install a vent or something like that, that's still to be installed at a later point. Those, I don't necessarily bother with them. They're quite easy to just push through at a later stage with a knife or a pin or something. So those can come or stay. It's really not something that I pay that much attention to. And then the last thing to consider is that some of these details, like the areas around the wave breaks, those you might actually not want to remove that section of the wooden decking because this wooden decking is not designed for use with the photo etch detail upgrade kit. It's designed for use with the plastic kit. And it could be that if you replace certain plastic components with photo etch components, they don't fit so well with this deck. So in a place like the wave breaks, where I know there's going to be a substantial replacement of plastic parts with photo etch parts that would be narrower, I tend to leave the wooden deck in place just in case there would then be a gap that would open up when I installed the photo etch wave break. If I have the deck there, once I've constructed the new wave break, I can put it in place and I can see if it is necessary to remove those pieces of the wooden deck or just leave them in place. It's just something that I do to keep my options open. Once I've removed the excess, I can then remove the deck from its backing. This is a very delicate process. Especially on this piece at the bow, where the anchor chains go, all of that area is very delicate. There is just not a lot of connections between those pieces of deck. So parts might fall off, parts might get broken. This is something that can happen. It's not the end of the world. In any case, I remove it from its backing and then position the wooden deck over the plastic deck. This then brings me to the next thing that you have to be aware of with these wooden decks. 
and that is that the fit is always incredibly tight. It almost feels as though the deck is too small for the kit that you're going to put it on. And that's okay, again, because these decks have the tendency to be able to stretch. It is wood, so it's fibrous. It will stretch a bit. And they also can be compressed if necessary as well. Not a lot, but just enough to wiggle it past and get it onto the actual kit. When placing the wooden deck on the kit, obviously I start at the high point. And in this case, for this section of deck, that would be the barbettes. And in this case, there are two barbettes, and that will quite nicely align this deck with the model itself. And once it's aligned, very slowly work it down. You can't push it down on one side too quickly, otherwise it will come out of alignment. In a sense, you have to get the whole length of deck to land on the plastic deck at the same time. If you don't do it that way, part at the very bow of the ship will be out of alignment with the part at the very stern of the ship. You need to lower the entire deck simultaneously such that it makes contact all at the same time to keep everything in alignment. It sounds difficult, but because of such a tight fit, the deck itself is being held up on the barbettes and it's quite easy to gently work its way down. Once it starts getting to the bottom, I then start in the middle and then work my way out trying to make sure that at least the central portions are in the correct location. And I find that if those are in the correct location, then as you move out, things start aligning quite easily and the deck will fall into place. This video is part of a build series on the HMS hood. If you are enjoying this video and would like to see other videos in this build series, then follow the link to the playlist in the cards above. If you have questions that you would like me to answer, then feel free to post them in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to help the channel. At the very bow, there's a small section of deck that didn't come with when I lifted it off of its backing. And as you can see, I'm able to, at the very end, position that quite easily on the bow. After completing the forward section, I move on to the midsection. The midsection of deck is considerably simpler than the forward section. If you remember from the previous video, I intentionally left the cladding off the walls for the first level of the superstructure. From what you saw of the installation of the forward section of deck, I think it now makes sense why I did that. Not having to worry about maneuvering the deck past some plastic parts is going to make things a lot easier. This is also a considerably simpler section than the forward section, so that's going to help as well. The process though is exactly the same. After cutting the excess off of the deck while it's stuck to the backing, I then remove the deck in its entirety and position it over the model. For this section of deck, I needed to find an appropriate reference point to align the deck. Obviously, I couldn't align it from the center island because I haven't installed the cladding, so that's not going to give me the proper shape for that section of the ship. However, there is a section to the forward of this section of deck where it will butt up against the very edge of the plastic, and it also will help on the wings. I wasn't happy with my first attempt with positioning the deck, so I lifted it off and tried again. This time I kept the wings much better aligned and I was able to push it forward to the very front of the section of ship. With that positioning I was happy and I was able to stick it down starting at the forward section and then moving back. The center section of deck in a way came in two parts. There's this small triangle at the very aft of this section that's completely disconnected from the rest of the sheet. So after installing the main section, I just stuck down this bit at the end. After the central section of deck, then moved on to the aft section. The aft section is reminiscent of the forward section, however it is considerably simpler. It's a smaller piece that's more sturdy, and there are less bits that need to be cut out in the middle, so it's going to have better integrity. Once again, I follow the same process. I cut off the excess, then remove the deck from its backing and position it over the barbettes at the stern of the ship. Once again, I use the barbettes to align the deck and I gently push it down, ensuring that it is level as it's lowered into position. Once the veneer is sufficiently pushed down and is making contact with the plastic deck, I then push it down over the full length of the quarter deck to make sure that it is in good contact. That is really all there is to it. I hope I've made this look easy, but the reality is it's taken me quite a while to figure out how to do this. And early attempts of installing wooden decks were not simple for me. I didn't know how to properly remove them from their backing. I didn't know how they would behave. 
It would take a lot of time and effort to get what one would think is a rather simple sticker to be stuck onto a ship. Fortunately, if you do make a mistake, they are forgiving in the sense that you can pull them off. The glue is very strong, but it can be removed. And if you do, in the worst case, tear the deck, it is made out of wood, so it is fibrous. So usually just realigning the parts will be sufficient to make that tear disappear. This is not all of the wooden decking that will be installed on this model. The hood had a shelter deck with a section of that also in unpainted teak. So there's another small section that will be installed over there. That is going to come at a later stage when I construct the shelter deck. So I won't be showing that in this video. In the next video, I'll begin installing the superstructure. I think just installing that first level of cladding is going to take a while. There are multiple modifications that need to be made. I need to install photo edge hatches and ladders. And I also need to maneuver those parts past the wooden deck in that area. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you would like to support this channel or see how this model looks when it is completed, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.